guys. Hope you're doing great. Our today's question is generate parentheses. Given n pairs of parentheses, write a function to generate all combinations of well-formed parentheses. For example, n equals to 3. A solution set is this. So whatever is the valid combination of 3 opening brackets and 3 closing brackets and we can form a, a, an entire valid parenthesis string is uh, going to be our answer for this question. All right, so without any delay, let's have a look at the different approaches we can use to solve this. So please pause the video, take a moment, have a look and come back. All right, so we do have a clear winner here as well, I think, because we have to find the different permutations or the different combinations of given n parentheses to form different valid parentheses strings. And uh, that is a classic example of backtracking. So we will be seeing how we apply backtracking to this problem. Uh, backtracking basically is a general algorithm where, where, where we have to, um, where we basically use that, that approach to build up different solutions to the problem, right? Or build up valid solutions to the problem. And whenever we find out that this might not lead to a valid output, right? Uh, we backtrack from there that basically we abandon that particular um, input and we backtrack from there. So for example, if we, in this case, we reach something like this, right? So we know that this can not form a valid parenthesis at any given point in time. And that is where we exactly backtrack from this and do not proceed further to try to make it a valid solution. So that's what backtracking is and how we'll go about it is that uh, we will write a code to implement the solution of this and then we'll understand it in detail how that works so that it not only helps understand this question but also understand backtracking in detail, right? So it's important for us to first approach the code for this. So let's get started. So the general approach would be to start with a blank string, right? And have a track of the number of open and closed parentheses in the string, right? And when we add a new um, parenthesis to it, so first we always check that the open number of parentheses is not more than n, right? Uh, and the closed number of parentheses should not be more than open number of parentheses because that we know is never going to form a valid uh, string of parentheses, right? Uh, so that is the two kind of checks that we'll be using and you'll be able to see how it kind of um, in a recursive way backtracks from wherever it finds that it's not a valid solution anymore. So let's get started. So our output here is a list. So let's create that first. So we'll be passing this array list to our helper function so that it keeps updating this. So we'll create a helper function now. To it, we'll give this. And as I said, we start with a blank string and the number of uh, the number of open brackets in the string, which is currently zero because the string itself is blank. The number of closed parentheses is also zero and n, which is the maximum number of parentheses we can use. Right, and then we return with that. Okay, now let's implement helper, which is where everything will actually happen. So it doesn't return anything. Okay, so this is what it's getting, right? And there's the string s, and then there's this integer open, and then there's this integer close, and then there's this n. Cool. Okay, so now first thing that we need to check that is this string s a valid combination of n parentheses, right? And since we are taking care of not leading to any or, or using backtracking, we are ensuring that we don't go any path which leads to any invalid output, right? Uh, we know that if the substring's length is equal to n into 2, right? Like here n is 3. So it can have, the length will be 6, right? 3 opening and 3 closing. 
So if that is attained, then it means we have got one valid combination and we just want to add it to result. Okay, so that's the first check that if the length equals to n into 2, okay, then we want to add this string to the result array list and just return. We don't want to process this string any further because it is it has reached the dead end where we have the output. Otherwise, we want to check if the open number of parentheses in the string is less than maximum, right? If yes, then you want to add more open parentheses to the string. So all we do is just add one and call the help function again on the updated string. Okay. Let's add this. Okay. And increment open by one because we have added one. Close stays the same and remains the same. Okay. And as I, as I was saying that at any point in time for our output to be valid, the number of closed parentheses will always be less than or equal to open. That is why we check close should be less than open, right? If it is, then we again call the helper function. We add an closing parenthesis. Open remains the same. Close is incremented by one and n again. Okay. So let's try running this. Once we see the score running, we'll also see if, okay, I think, oh, it's not max, it's n, right? We'll also see how this is actually working, so yeah. Okay, let's submit it. Great. So let's see how it works. <clears throat> okay. So first of all, we are at this state, right? Uh, right now I have taken N2 for being able to fit all of the various uh, calls to this method uh, in this frame. And let's call this not helper and BT again for brevity of uh, the content on this slide. So this is our helper function. Basically, string is blank initially, open is zero, close is zero, and two is the value of n given to us. So from two, we can generate only two valid parentheses, right? Um, okay, so what would happen is that it will check is the length of s less than four, if it is, and open is less than two. Yeah, it was. So we just add one opening parenthesis, open becomes one and close remains zero, right? Okay. On the other hand, right, because open is equal to close, right? So we, we don't get into any other way of solving this, right? This is the only way. The other part of the code which checks for if my close is less than open so it's not here right because it's closed so, it, so there's no other way of computing this from at least from here now after this so again it checks is length less than four yeah it is and is open less than n which is two yes it is so we add one more opening bracket. Now open becomes one plus one, that is two. And this is still zero. After that, now since open has reached equal to n, right? It's no more less than n. So we would not be able to do anything here and we backtrack from here, right? And we reach the other close less than max part of the code where we see yeah, less, uh, less than four and we see that, okay, close is less than open, right? Because close is was zero here. So we add one closing bracket, increment close by one. Okay. And then from here, 
since again close is open is true there's no way we can work that out uh, and again we see that close is less than open right one is less than two and the length is less than four so we add another closing bracket all both of these become two and we get one valid combination and since now the length is equal to four we add this to the result okay now this backtracks to this point okay from here open is equal to 1 and close is 0 so close is less than open was also a valid scenario so after all of this has happened the code basically jumps back the way in recursion to this point okay to this point and then it goes into the other the next if where the close is less than open and since that's true and the length is less than 4, it adds one opening, uh, one closing bracket. Okay. All right. So now, open is, in the next call to helper, open is less than close, uh, sorry, max, because it was 1 here and this is 2. So we add another opening bracket. Okay. And and, and on the other hand, open is equal to close, so, so it's not able to do anything from this particular point, right? But from here, it would be able to because close is less than open. So as we can see here, since close was less than 2, which is open, we could add one more open, uh, one more closing bracket and now this becomes 2. And here since open was equal to 2, so it again reached a dead end. There was nothing else that we could have done. Um, and this is another way we could have handled it. And again, after this, the length becomes 4. So we have to. We have a valid answer. We add it to the result. And that's it. So this is how this code basically works. I hope you have been able to understand it using the slide. And... Uh, the time complexity for this is a little complicated. So for solutions like these, when you have where you, when you're using backtracking, uh, <clears throat> there is a concept called the nth Catalan number, right? Which basically means the number of valid combinations that could have resulted from a given uh, number of, like for example, in this case, n parentheses, right? And for each such valid combination n number of characters are traversed. As you can see here, we traverse n characters to achieve each valid combination. And hence the time complexity and the space complexity for bo both for such solutions is n into the uh, an nth Catalan number. So that is the time complexity. Please feel free to read through more on Google about this. Um, I hope you have found this video interesting and you have being able to understand backtracking in a better manner than you used to understand. If so, please like, share and subscribe. Have a good day. Thank you guys.